Hello, my name is Stacy Jensen. Thank you for watching part two of our video tutorial on how to make a clean edit. So I have edited the photo in Camera Raw to prepare for the sharpening that I needed and the contrast. Now I would like to make it um, a particular tone using the action so that I carry that tone throughout my entire session. The first action I wanted to run on this photo today, Color Veil's Everyday Clean Splendor. Right now it is a freebie that you can grab and try yourself if you do like the action. You can go ahead and purchase the set, which has many amazing um, opportunities for adjusting portrait photos beautifully. So I've ran Splendor and I turned it down in its entirety to 85. I've done this just to save some time in the video, but run the action and turn down the opacity to what fits or suits your photograph. Also, it's important to come in and adjust layers if you need them adjusted so that your light source and um, it, clarity and exposure are suiting your needs. Many times when we build actions, they're built over the top so that you can turn them down and ensure you can use them for any type of photograph. So with this one, I'm just going to bump it down to 85% opacity, close up the action, click back on background. When you're running multiple things and we're going to start touching up skin, it's really important to click your background so that you can start fresh each time. Or you may flatten an image. If you're going to do that, it's really important to go into your history palette and make a snapshot of what you've done so that you remember, um, you know, you can come back to a particular portion of your editing. So we're going to name this one Splendor so that if I needed to come back and redo, it would bring me back to this state. Now you can see it in my um, history palette. Okay, so we are going to start with her skin. The first thing I'm going to do, which I like to do, is run a face powder. Face powder is really great because it gives uh, a uniform look to skin tone rather than being blotchy and having multiple levels of um, light to dark. This will really help, especially on her arm. So we're going to, it is telling us that we need to click an area on her skin. This is the skin color that you're going to choose to paint all over. So make sure that you're using something not too drastic, somewhere meeting in the middle. We're going to let the action run. Once it does, you always grab a paintbrush. We are on a black layer mask. Please make sure you're on the black layer mask. So we have a white paintbrush. And we're going to paint over her arm. And what this is going to do is just tone it up a little bit blend the colors in. It's a really great action to use on any image. We're also going to just run that up her arm a little bit. Just to blend in the colors so that they are a natural gradation. Okay, and if you want to turn it up a little bit, you can just come over to the layer with the color you chose and uh, pull your slider up a bit and that will um, give it a more blended feel. Make sure that you don't overdo this. Um, nobody's skin is so perfect. So I am all set with that. I'm going to close up the action one more time. Click on my background once again, very important. We're going to zoom in. I don't over correct the face unless there are some things that really need to be done, some as such as blemishes or scars. But if I do, I click on my clone. It is my preference, but definitely please use the healing brush if you prefer. I feel like I have more control over the clone. Always make a copy of your background layer. Uh, by doing that, I hit my command or control and the letter J on my keyboard. Now I have a copy that I can make adjustments to first. So I'm going to get a small brush and I'm just going to 
go over to my opacity slider of the clone and turn it down to a medium level, somewhere around 50. Go back over to Jessica's face and grab a portion of her skin near her scar. Um, this does not need to be too far away or too close, but just somewhere in that vicinity that will carry the same color tone. And click over onto her once that is um, gone, and I've only had to click twice, I'll move on. I never overcorrect. Again, I'm coming over to a next blemish. I'm using area around the blemish to select it using my Alt key, and then clicking over the blemish one time. One time is generally enough. If not, you can just grab some new skin. Okay. And Next, we will one more area. You can also use this not just for blemishes, but also for a graduating the skin tones if you have some shadows. Um, don't overwork the face too much, though. Okay? I feel pretty good about this. Before I go into any more editing, um, because I'm going to start working on the eyes and, and hair and things, I do like to flatten. But again, I'm going to go to my history brush. I'm going to make a new snapshot. And this is cloning. So that I have those layers if I need to resort back to them. So I'm going to find my flatten action and click play. Thank you so much for watching this portion, and we will have available the third just shortly.